right, guys, thank you so much once again for joining us for Get Hooked podcast, a podcast uh, produced by Hawk. And what we're really here for is to educate um, the towing industry, those outside of the towing industry, and really just bring the community together in ways that we can support each other. Um, so I'm really excited about today's episode um, because today we are featuring um, someone who has been in the industry for over 35 years now. He's been a partner um, at Central Towing and Transport for 33 plus years now. Um, and he's Breckmaster certified, so he is an industry leader, no doubt. Um, Quinn Pine. Quinn, welcome to the uh, show. Welcome to the inaugural Get Hooked podcast. This is our uh, first attempt at uh, doing something that people might enjoy listening to. Um, let's go uh, give us a quick background about yourself, uh, your company, the California Towing Association, of which you are the president. Uh, let's talk about you and your path. Well, uh, I think probably the, the big thing is, is uh, been in the business for about 38, 39 years now. Should have been retired. Wished I would have been retired. <laughs> but uh, uh, started back in 1982 and with, with Central Tow here and um, started out was a very small uh, we had three trucks when I when I bought in and became a partner, uh, and uh, we've grown the spectrum. Uh, at one time, was up to almost fifty employees and five terminals, and uh, rocking and rolling, and have kind of scaled back a little bit now, down to three terminals and uh, running about twenty four power power equipment, tow trucks, and uh, Tractors. My mainstay is transportation side. Uh, I move generators, chillers, and uh, air compressors all over California, and uh, it's it's actually doing quite well, even with the virus and the the lockdown that we're on. We're, we've been quite busy, so I'm a little fortunate there. Yeah, equipment transport's been a relatively new addition to the industry that uh, a lot of people are really starting to take advantage of. Uh, how about your uh, your history with the California Towing Association? Let's get into that a little bit, uh, being that you are the president. Well, actually started shortly after I became a partner. I got uh, introduced to the association and uh, actually met Steve Cardinelli and started with the training program and being involved in the training program. Um, worked my way in, um, we have what are called chapters here in the state. There's uh, roughly 13 of them, uh, and I'm in the greater Bay Area chapter. Worked my way up from the chairs there to the president of that chapter, holding a seat at the uh, board of directors, state board. Um, through the times, I've uh, been... Uh, president of the chapter multiple times and uh, have held numerous uh, seats at the state level. Uh, probably the biggest accomplishment of my career and the one I'm most proud of was, uh, was one of the founding members of the uh, Towing and Re Regulatory Oversight Council as a uh, member of the council and then working my way up as a vice president uh, and being the Northern California uh, co-chair for that place. And then uh, felt the need to step into the presidency and ran last year, January, a year ago, January, and became the president of the California Tetra Association. We are the largest association in the United States Seem to be doing quite well with membership. We could always grow. Everybody can. Uh, and my goal is to give a lot back to the industry. Give it to the members. Make it worthwhile. Um, what ways are telling your roadside companies being affected by the uh, COVID virus, the coronavirus going around right now? You know, earlier today I was on a uh, webinar uh, regarding the SBA loans and the PPP and the, mm -hmm. the grant and all that stuff. And we had towers from all over the United States on there. Mm -hmm. And through setting that webinar up in conjunction with the uh, Arizona Tow Association, APTRA, 
um, talking to a lot of towers. Uh, I think the biggest thing that towers are feeling right now is the slowdown. Uh, yes. The call volume is down. Um, nobody is moving. Traffic is very light, uh, which is also a scary thing because mm -hmm. uh, most of our accidents are quite more severe. I think the biggest thing is, is the slowdown that's hitting, and I keep telling everybody it's not the slowdown. Uh, that worries me. It's uh, about 30 to 60 days out when our receivables have dried up. Sure, mm -hmm. that's a big concern. Yeah, yeah. That's when it's going to become tough. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I know we're feeling the effects of it as we are in it right now. Um, so another question I want to ask you is, you know, in your opinion, outside of what you just mentioned about receivables drying up in 30 to 60 days, is what other ways do you think that, um, you know, companies, tow operators are going to be affected by this in the coming months? Well, that right there is probably the biggest thing I think that we're going to see uh, mm -hmm. is the, the receivables aren't going to be there. Uh, hopefully, these companies are uh, doing the right thing and filing for the grants and filing for the SBA loans and getting whatever stimulus packages they can. Um, I hate to say it, but I'm scared that we're going to lose towers. We're going to lose. Um, and, and it all comes with the big unknown. How long are we going to be in this position? And it, we have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't tell you what tomorrow's going to bring, you know, let alone what tonight's going to bring. So um, it's, it's a huge unknown, and we're dealing with it. Uh, when you get out of bed in the morning and you take that first deep breath is you start in, and whatever hits, you deal with it, and you handle it. You know, I heard you mentioned it um, just now, and so I kind of want to, before I go on, um, kind of get into that. So you had your webinar this morning and you guys talked a bit about, you know, the loan, the small business loans and what that could possibly mean. Was there anything out of that conversation that you guys had that you felt um, was educational at the very least to find out what, you know, how we could be supportive of one another or um, is it just inf purely educational informational on um, what, what, you know, eligibility status you would have to get the loans or? Well, there's no qualifications for this. This is kind of the nice thing. It's not that you got to have a credit score. Mm -hmm. uh, about keeping people employed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're basing it off of your, uh, your payroll. And uh, the biggest thing that anybody can do, which uh, we are doing and all the associations that I've talked to, um, uh, we're all advertising it. Get get the information. It's not that difficult. Uh, yeah, when you start looking at SBA loans, they can be a little overwhelming. This is pretty much easy because it's government. Uh, and, and it's a stimulus, part of the stimulus package. And, uh, you know, there also was the grant that was in there. And that's a that's basically a free ten thousand dollars if you file for it, get it in there early. Uh, they're going to just give you ten thousand dollars to help you survive, and you need to do that because otherwise you may not survive. Mm -hmm. So obviously, all the uh, CTTA members are aware of this, and as you said, the Arizona Towing Association as well. Uh, what else are these state associations doing to help support uh, independent tow companies, uh, providers, uh, maybe even the smaller uh, outfits, guys that only have a couple of trucks on the road and guys that might really be feeling the impact of this right away? Well, I think that the, the biggest thing is getting the word out. The more the word that we can get it out there, uh, social media. Social media is, is huge right now you, mm -hmm. because you don't have to be a member of the association to see the see the posts and get the information, um, you know, and, and it's kind of funny. We, the, the podcast or the webinar that we just did, um, I don't even know how many for sure were in there, but I know it was well over 200. Mm -hmm. And, uh, 
that that's a pretty big hit. I know that the presenter from Arizona was overwhelmed at the beginning that her webinar was not really set up for that kind of amount of people. And I think there were a lot of people that because she wasn't prepared uh, for that many people, I think it hit her hard and uh, mm -hmm. there were people that didn't make it in there. Uh, I'm hearing through the grapevine that they're going to redo it another one with more information on next Wednesday. Gotcha. Uh, I'll be, uh, as soon as I get the word and what's going on, we'll be posting that stuff. Uh, we'll do an email blast to our members and we'll put it on the social media so that everybody can get it. That's great. That's great. That's, th that's a big thing that, uh, you know, we can go ahead and get that information out. We can try and help out with our, uh, our social profiles as well, trying to get that information out. But uh, now more than ever, it, it's, it's really starting to become apparent that you need to become a member of your, your local or state association. You need to be able to get access to this info rather quickly. Um, I, know, I know you guys are always talking about, you know, membership drives and, and getting the numbers up. Um, what do you guys feel about the, the younger generation and, the, uh, and have, getting them involved in the associations? Actually, uh, I totally think that I wished I could get a lot more younger guys. Uh, I've got, uh, some, some of my board that is the younger generation. Uh, um, one of my vice presidents that I've become very close with, uh, my education, uh, VP from Southern California, Mr. Sean Van Lingen, mm -hmm. uh, a fountain of information and, uh, I think it's a wonderful thing. I, I we, we've got to get the younger generation more involved. We've got to get the the technological side of of what they bring to the table more into us. To that we're doing more things like this, uh, podcast, uh, webinars, uh, things like that. Because I think we're going to see that even being used more in meetings. Uh, in the future, because I think that you're going to see that uh, we're going to have to hold our meetings with a social distance uh, uh, kind of <laughs> is going to apply. You know, I think it's going to become very, very much a part of our normal routine. Are you finding that is it hard to find younger, a younger generation to pull from as towers or just in general? It's like there's not a lot of guys maybe stepping up at that age or maybe like a younger age that want to even transition into the industry. Well, you know, it's kind of funny because uh, the younger generation doesn't want to give up their free time to belong to an association. Mm -hmm. We find that all the time. Uh, and, and it is, it is tough. It takes a lot of time. Um, at least if you're going to do a job that, you know, to benefit the industry. And that's what this is all about. It's benefiting the industry. You know, I, 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 being inducted into the Hall of Fame this last year was the most humbling experience I've ever gone through. But I also believe that part of my being suggested to be in there was because of the job that I do to give back to the industry. I want to leave this better than what it was when I started. Yeah. And and it's tough. It's a tough mix to be able to have the, the time that they have and, and to work the amount of hours that you work in this industry. So, so you know, you, you said something that really resonated with me, Quinn, which was, you know, what you're doing is for the industry. And I think that's huge, you know, especially in these times, a lot of people are considering or a lot of people are looking at self first and figuring out what they can do for themselves first. But, um, you know, when you have some community minded, um, when you take community minded actions, I think that makes a difference. Um, so for you, as far as like members of just the broader towing community, whether it be truck manufacturers, motor clubs, suppliers, what are ways that we could come together right now to really support towing companies? Um, and, you know, especially as we, we don't know what this, what the end of this will be. So are there any ways that you feel like we could step up or, or kind of branch out outside of the box to really support you guys? You know, 
I don't have any ideas right now. I beat my head against the wall trying to come up with it. Uh, <laughs> dealing with what we are dealing with with the with the coronavirus right now, it's so tough. So, Quinn, you mentioned that uh, you're uh, you, you're doing a lot of transport work with generators and equipment and stuff like that. Um, as, a, as a tow company owner yourself and somebody that is you know, branching out into different avenues of, of exploration here, um, what do you think other companies can do to try and sustain some, some downturn right now? Because obviously we are feeling volume across the board. Um, everybody in this industry is feeling a decrease in volume no matter where you are. But uh, any suggestions for people to look for alternate means of work right now? Well, I think the first thing you have to do is look at what your, your business model is. And if you can look at diversification, you have to be able to diversify. Um, many years ago, when the freeway service patrol started up, I placed a bid and was in the running, and they came out and interviewed. And one of the questions they asked me was, why? Why do you want to be a freeway service patrol? And I said, it's part of the pie. You have to have a piece of the pie. And the more pieces to that pie that you can have, the more successful you're going to be. Now, naturally, you have to do each and every piece of that pie to the best of your ability, maintain service and everything else. Uh, you know, so it, it, it comes down to the company. A one truck, a two truck company, they can still diversify. Look at the different types of towing. Maybe they need to look at, uh, one truck doing long haul work, uh, getting into maybe looking at going out of state. Uh, of course, you become into insurances and everything else that come into play. So you've got to place it. And you've got to look at it and see what fits your model. Sure. This, this isn't just a conversation for now. This is a, this is a conversation for the future as well. Um, and once we get out of this, once we come back out of this, you absolutely need to continue to diversify. You can't just, you know, you can't just be a motor club tower or just a police tower anymore. You, you need to, to have different avenues of revenue. Yeah. When we come out of this, I think that everybody's going to have a different view overall. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm very. Uh, yeah. No, so one thing I had a, a question for you, um, Quinn, is, so you, you obviously still have your trucks on the road. You guys are doing transport. What are you doing right now to fight the virus itself or to keep your employees safe? So your guys that are out on the road, what are you guys specifically doing to make sure you're protected? Well, you know, you know that uh, from the start, like I said, we, we went into shutdown mode three weeks ago. Uh, mm -hmm. Instantaneously, when this became evident that we were in a, a, a tough situation, and I'm near a hotbed being Santa Clara. Uh, Fremont almost borders with Santa Clara County. So, uh, you know, we're cautious. Uh, I immediately uh, started doing precautions with, sorry, a customer doesn't ride with us anymore. Yeah. Uh, all of our motor clubs, all of our police departments, everybody else that we told, sorry, we can't take a rider. Uh, we, we will, we will go to the extreme of putting a customer in their own vehicle on top of a car carrier and transport them to a safe location so that they can call somebody or get an Uber or whatever you can get. Mm -hmm. The, the next thing is, is, uh, sanitizing the equipment. Um, I, I'm fortunate that my trucks are predominantly one driver, one truck, so, but they sanitize their truck uh, every day. Uh, they're using sanitizers, uh, their hands uh, constantly. Um, you know, I was against the mask uh, ruling. Uh, we hadn't been wearing them. Today, we started wearing masks. Mm -hmm. After what uh, Trump said last night and everything else, uh, we've, we've instituted, started going in that, uh, hopefully by the end of the weekend, I'll have more masks available and, and be able to rotate them. Uh, you know, because there, there isn't anything out there. I was fortunate that I did find a couple of, uh, boxes of N95s that we had here that I was going to donate to the hospital, but now we're going to hang on to them for ourselves 
until we at least come up with a better solution. Gotcha. Uh, you know, yeah. everything yeah. else, it's like the hand sanitizer. You can't yeah. find it in a store anywhere. So we're yeah. making our own. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I've heard, I've even heard people making their own face masks out of bandanas. So there's like yeah. videos out there, of, you know, at least we're at that point now where you just got to make sure you do what you got to do, I guess. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to transition a little bit because um, it's so, it's so helpful to, to kind of hear what you guys are doing and just what you, um, what you guys have been compiling over the last, you know, few months of just information and, and um, really helping other people understand which direction you should be taking to stay afloat. Um, recently, Hawk CEO Corey Brundage, he wrote an article in, um, where he talked about the importance of protecting towing and roadside operators. And um, so I wanted to check in to see if you had heard about it or had read it. And if so, um, what else would you add to the topic itself? For insurance companies, towers and, and roadside professionals, tow operators, uh, they are the first line of customer service for most insurance companies. And they, they are the uh, sometimes only touch point for insurance companies and, and uh, the Corey, uh, our CEO is just trying to uh, you know, let insurance companies know that these people on the front lines are really going to affect, you know, how your business looks and functions within the next couple of months, because if, if you can't get roadside professionals out there, you can't get tow operators out there to help out. Um, you know, people are going to end up stranded and, 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 you know, people don't want to wait for their insurance company. They do, they don't want to wait for extended ETAs and, they don't want to have problems even in scenarios like this. So, you know, that, that is how they reflect on you. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. It, that's true. It's all true. The, the reality comes down to though is, is I think you have to go a step further. Um, in three weeks, I don't think I've seen an insurance adjuster at any of my facilities, any three of them. Mm -hmm. uh, the vehicles are sitting. Um, you know, and this is probably uh, another scary part of this because when this is all over, how the insurance companies are going to deal with this. Um, you know, vehicles are sitting here, they're, they're drawing storage, and are they going to come back to us and want to negotiate deals and stuff? Uh, the insurance industry is twofold. Uh, you have two sides of it. You have the emergency roadside service uh, side of them, and then you have the insurance side. And those two sides don't talk. There isn't a lot of communication even internally, and it becomes very tough. And the insurance side, um, they really don't care. They don't even care about the emergency roadside uh, portion of it um, and I know that for a fact I've had them tell me that uh, the the emergency roadside part of their business uh, they naturally do care and they try to support the insurance side so it's a one-sided double-edged sword and it becomes very tough yeah so you mentioned the uh, you mentioned your storage uh, and, and vehicles sitting there. Uh, how are you guys handling impounds and, and releases and dealing with the public coming into your facilities? Well, actually, that's uh, <laughs> back to the, we shut down three weeks ago and we instituted just like we do on a, a weekend or a holiday. Our lobbies are closed. Uh, we're doing it out in the open air. We're meeting them outside. Um, my Fremont location, my headquarters where dispatch is, um, we're asking them to call in and we get all the information, look up the vehicle and, uh, go from there and, and deal with it all outside, mm -hmm. uh, and maintain a six foot, you know, uh, spacing between us, you know, that, uh, social spacing. So. Yep. <laughs> six foot social distancing. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's the, that seems the best way to go about it. You know, how you guys are doing it. It's just interesting since you uh, had brought it up and I, I didn't even think about that portion of it where cars that have been in accidents, those sound like the ones that you're saying are sitting as well. And, you know, you're just waiting for the insurance company to come back and see what they're going to say. 
Because it is, when you say drawing storage, is it drawing the storage fees because they're just sitting there? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. I've got the same responsibility to the vehicle I did before this happened. Yep. I'm doing the same things. I'm protecting it. I'm doing all the care, custody, and control. I'm managing it. I'm going through the lien sale process, everything else. It almost sounds like uh, if we could get these uh, insurance adjusters on some sort of FaceTime or technology solution where we can get them to come to your lot virtually and make an assessment that might uh, solve some of these problems. Well, it, exactly. And, and we've heard that there are some that are doing that. Some of our adjusters uh, or insurance adjusters, because I have not had any reach out to us yet. Uh, we could photograph and, and send them photographs or video. Uh, you know, we do have that capability to do all that stuff. And anything that we could do to make it easier on them to be able to make that valuation and make those determinations. Mm -hmm. um, I've always said, ultimately, what I would love in my business, uh, especially with predominantly law enforcement, is tow the car three days of storage and release it. Uh, and I'd be perfectly happy, <laughs> you know, so, uh, but, but it don't work that way. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately it don't, but <laughs> only if it did. Um, so just to, I wanted to hear your, uh, your thoughts on, um, what the term essential worker, um, as far as it attributes to the tow operators considered, because I know the verbiage in the document that um, CISA sent out as far as guidelines for essential workers didn't expressly state a tow operator or a tow company as an essential worker, where we know you all are. Um, what are your thoughts on that so far? I saw that TRAA sent out a memo for its members to carry out a form in the event they were stopped. Um, so what are your thoughts on that? It's very interesting to me. Mm -hmm. When this thing started and they named us or they named essential services, um, I started reaching out to my law, law enforcement contacts and asking. And it was quite hilarious when I spoke to the California Highway Patrol and they said, well, you're not a first responder, but you're an essential service. And, and I often question, why are we in the federal government looked at under the TIMS program that we are a first responder? Mm -hmm. We respond to these emergencies. We deal with everything that they deal with, but they don't want to give us that recognition. Um, it's a total lack of respect, and I think that through this, maybe this might be a little bit of glimmer of sunshine out of it, is maybe we can change that a little bit, Absolutely. just by how we act, uh, and maybe gain some respect from them. Mm -hmm. so, um, but no, it, it, it's... The towing community, uh, to keep the roadways clear and safe, uh, we need to be recognized and we need to be out there. Yeah, so. 100%. No, nobody's picking up these cars off the side of the road. Nobody's cleaning up these recoveries. You know? and, and like you said earlier, with these big accidents, uh, people are, the, the roads are open. People are, are getting above those speed limits now because they, they normally don't. I mean, uh, you mentioned Sean Van Ling, and Sean's got a, a, a pretty serious uh, social media presence uh, in Southern California here. Uh, we all pretty much follow him, and, and he's been working some wild, crazy wrecks out, uh, down this way. I mean, he does normally, but if, if you follow social media and you follow, you know, the bigger, the bigger guys on social media and you see the work they're doing, uh, some of these wrecks are getting really nasty out there, and, and somebody's got to do this work. Somebody's got to get these roads back open. Yeah. You know, I tell you, it's, uh, it's a situation, I think, that even if they were to lock it down another notch or two and, and take more people off the road, I still believe the tower is going to have to be there because as long as vehicles are moving, uh, they're going to have to clean up something. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, we're not doing no law enforcement that I know of anywhere and I talked to uh, 
gentleman from Florida this morning. Uh, they're not doing any abandons. They're not doing hardly any arrests, uh, anything. You know, the only thing they're getting is accident work. Uh, the normal law enforcement towing, there isn't any normal anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're doing is basically cleaning up an accident today. Um, very little are you getting anything that's uh, not blocking a roadway. It's either blocking a roadway or they're leaving it alone. They don't want to touch. It. They don't want to tow. Yeah. So, oh. and because of that, we're always going to be an essential service. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that, like you said, that is the glimmer of hope, you know, in this time is like, I think that more people are starting to recognize um, just how valuable this industry is and, and, you know, why like society would kind of, break down if we didn't have, you know, tow providers out there making sure that the cars get moved out of the way when they need it. So, um, so we've had you on for almost 40 minutes now, Quinn. So I just want to wrap this up because I'm so appreciative of just who you are, your time and just spending it with us today. Um, so just to close you out, you recently sent out a letter just um, highlighting suggestions on ways that like tow operators can protect themselves from the virus. We talked about it here. Um, you shared your suggestions. Any last words, comments, um, encouragements that you want to um, just send out to maybe other, um, whether it be other tow association presidents, companies, anyone that you want to leave an encouraging word to? I think the only thing that uh, regarding anything as far as personal protection is uh, whatever makes you feel safe. Follow the federal guidelines and your state guidelines and whatever makes you feel safe. Mm -hmm. uh, don't be afraid to protect yourself. Uh, we have to protect ourselves. Uh, we want to go home at the end of the, the shift, and you want to go home to your family and not infect your family. So um, when you're at home, stay at home. Don't go out and get infected elsewhere. Mm -hmm. It's tough. It's real tough. I'm I myself am going stir crazy because I go home and I come to work. I don't leave my house and I don't leave my office. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, uh, it's kind of crazy that the situation we're in. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that I would say before I let you get, get rid of me here is, is uh, <laughs> please, <laughs> <laughs> please, anything that you guys can do to get the word out, get information out uh now is the time to involve the whole towing industry not just association members mm -hmm. sure it's an industry-wide issue yeah. you know i'm not looking to gain members right now i want to make sure that the industry is protected and taken care of and they're getting all the information that we can when this is all over with, I think we have another fight that we're going to have to fight. Uh, I know we do. I know that once the legislature comes back, we've got a fight on our hands. Mm -hmm. And at that time, yes, I'll be reaching out and asking. This is what we did in an emergency, but now we're in another emergency and we need your help. Mm -hmm. Go on. Yeah. You know, well, hey, Quinn, that's what this platform now, don't, is don't worry about it. We'll get you on the, we'll get you when it all comes back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. And that's exactly what this platform is for, is just to educate the towing community. Um, we created this because we don't, you know, it's not about honk. It's not about, um, you know, us as a company. It's about the towing community and being able to educate and bring us all together. And so, um everything you shared this morning is going to be shared on our socials because we want to make sure that, you know, the valuable information that you shared with us, we get it out there to the community. So, you know, yeah, anytime you have, you know, this is, I'd be interested to, to loop back around and talk about the next fight that we might have on our hands and get that out there. You know, let's talk about it. Let's be happy. Be prepared. Anything that we can do to put the word out. Yeah. Yeah. And frankly, you know, if, if your, your state has an association, uh, there, there's one in almost every state. If not, there, there's a membership that you can belong to. Get out there, sign up, see what you can do to help out, donate some money, 
Uh, these associations really, really are there to protect the tow companies. Where they're there to protect the tow providers, and and they're there to ensure that you get the information that you need and get the support you need. So get out, join your say association. If if if, the, if your association is not doing anything for you, do what Quinn did. Run for president. That's right. <laughs> Awesome. Well, Quinn, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, Thanks been- so much, Quinn. We appreciate it. No problem. Sure. Thank you guys yeah. for having me. All right. Thank you again. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. See you in the ditch. Bye-bye. Take okay. care. Bye-bye. Oh, man. What a great episode. Quinn Pining of CTTA, thank you so much for joining us again. We just appreciate all the information. Uh, make sure you guys tune back in for more updates. We're just going to be continuing this thing going as we're all staying at home, safe together. Yeah, follow us on social media at Honk for Help. Um, we're on Facebook, Instagram. Um, we have our partner support, Instagram, Facebook, everything. Just get in touch with us. We're going to be pushing out as much information as we can as soon as we can get it to you. We're going to be coming out with another couple of episodes real soon. But uh, go ahead and, and sign up and join your state association. Slow down, move over, and we'll talk to you guys real soon.